Okay, so welcome to this afternoon's um, uh, sessions that continue this focus on uh, Taiwanese uh, history. I'm really delighted to welcome back uh, Professor Lin Manhorn from Academia Sinica's Institute of uh, Modern History. Um, I think it was about four or five years ago five that, we, years that we last ago. welcomed you for a, um, a conference that we co-organized with the British Academy, National Science Council and Academia uh, Sinica. Um, Professor Lin is going to talk about a couple of uh, topics. The first one is going to look at the um, sovereign, sovereignty claim of the Diaoyutai Islands. Um, and, I think, and the second um, topic is going to look at the relationship between colonial Taiwan and um, the Japanese puppet um, um, uh, Men uh, regime Manchuria. of Manchuria. Um, I remember when I first kind of looked through Professor uh, Lin's kind of CV, that, that um, uh, Manchuria topic really kind of interested me, so, I, I, that, so I'm really delighted you agreed to uh, talk about um, uh, that aspect of your research. One other thing I should also say at this stage is uh, how um, th this afternoon's lectures came about. Uh, this afternoon's lectures are sponsored um, by the National Central uh, Library um, as part of their uh, Taiwan Chinese Studies lecture uh, series. So I believe Professor Lin has also been, uh, was it, have you been lecturing in Germany as well? Or uh, it... Yeah, 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 for conferences. Mm -hmm. um, we really enjoy working with the National Central Library and, and it's really helped us to promote um, our Taiwan Studies program here. One particular thing I should also mention in terms of working together with the National Central Library is the, our new uh, Taiwan Studies Resource Centre in the SOAS Library, which we just opened uh, last November. And it's a, um, a wonderful collection of Taiwanese books um, and DVDs that are closely linked to our, our teaching program. So uh, for those of you that don't know the SOAS Library well, I really encourage you to uh, take a look at that wonderful, uh, I think it's on the, on the second floor, along with most of the other Taiwan uh, material. Okay, uh, and um, uh, we'll have a, a further talk later on this afternoon on resources in China and Taiwan studies. But... Um, now I'd better give the floor to Professor Lina. Thanks again for coming back. It's, it's great to see you again. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the introduction uh, of uh, Professor Dafei, and uh, thanks for your being here. Thanks also for the invitation by the National Library of the Republic of China. Uh, for my two talks, uh, the following one, as Professor Dafei has uh, just uh, briefly mentioned, it will be about Taiwan, Mandal Guo, and the Simon Japanese War. This one will be about uh, the Diao Yutai isolates. Actually, uh, Diao Yutai has been termed by Japan as the Senkaku, and by my People's Republic of China as a Diao Yu Island, Japan as a Senkaku Islands, and the People's Republic of China call it as a Diao Yu Islands. And uh, for Republic of China, in the older normalization, it's a uh, TIAO, Tiao uh, Yutai. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, mostly they accept the, the, the Han Yu uh, normalization, so they t turn it into uh, DIAO, uh, Y U T A I. Uh, since I come from Republic of China, sorry that I, I will call it as Tiao uh, Yutai uh, Isolate for this presentation. Where are these islands? Uh, this uh, Wikipedia map, I think, is quite clear. Uh, the, uh, they have uh, actually, in total, uh, eight, eight islands. Uh, and, uh, but um, there are three bigger ones, which have been shown here. Uh, three bigger ones' uh, position uh, relative to China is like this, and uh, uh, relative to Taiwan is like this. Relatively to the south, south, southernest, uh, uh, Japan's uh, islands is like this, uh, and uh, to to uh, Naha, which is uh, the capital of uh, Ryukyu Islands, is like this. Okay, so this is about the location of uh, uh, the these islands. Other than that, three uh, main islands. Uh, that is three main islands is in Chinese called the Huang Wei Yu. Uh, uh, the the the. the Biggest one is the Diao Yutai, that's why the whole island is called Diao Yutai Island. Big one is this, and um, there's uh, some distance in between. Diao Yutai is here, 
and uh, and uh, the three uh, biggest one that uh, we we just saw is this three, Diao Yitai, Huang Weiyu, Ci Weiyu. So Ci Weiyu is in in uh, bigger uh, in uh, in longer distance, okay. And uh, um, around this uh, main island as uh, Diao Yitai, there are uh, the Chong Bei Yan, Chong Nan Yan, uh, uh, Bei Xiao Dao, Nan Xiao Dao, and uh, the Fei 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 La. Okay, uh, there are also uh, Japanese uh, terms for these uh, various islands. Uh, you see, in these uh, several uh, islands, uh, it's actually just a rock, so it's called a yan. Uh, uh, five is uh, uh, named by Dao islands. Uh, three has been named as a yan, just um, uh, simply just rocks. Uh, what's the difference between Dao and the rocks? Uh, rocks didn't have any plants and animals, uh, so it's so impossible for, for uh, uh, anything. Uh, but uh, for, for the Dao, there's uh, plants and animals on it, okay? This is about the Diao Yi Islands. And um, um, this topic has been quite a recent controversial topic. Uh, um, this uh, island uh, turned into controversial in 1968 to 1972 because at that time one UN organization found that this island area was the area for uh, um, uh, uh, very huge uh, uh, oil uh, and natural gas reservation which were, could be bigger than that of the Middle East. So uh, then those uh, uh, three, uh, several uh, uh, small islands, you know the, the total area for those uh, small islands is just uh, uh, six to seven square miles. So tiny. But the, because of that the possibility of a huge oil and a natural gas reservation, it turned into a, some spot for uh, a keen international uh, uh, competition. But um, with uh, those uh, international uh, 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 co co competition, in the end, um, uh, on May 15th of uh, 17, uh, seven, uh, 1972, sorry, May 15th of 1972, the U.S. forwarded this is several islands uh, to Japan. But in this uh, process of uh, uh, transferring, uh, the U.S. Uh, gave uh, an ROC, a uh, diplomatic document, which is the title today. That's the May uh, 26, uh, 1971 note. Okay? Uh, in that uh, diplomatic record, the uh, U.S. said, uh, what U.S. Is, uh, had, has been, had been forwarding to Japan is an administrative right, not a sovereignty. For sovereignty, U.S. Uh, will wait for the involved country, countries to solve by themselves. But uh, such uh, uh, transference of uh, administrative rights uh, does not undermine the ROC's underlying claims uh, for these uh, islands. So um, this is um, uh, uh, about our topic, the, the 1971 note. And, and that note, okay, um, uh, 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 what was um, given to ROC, but uh, since, since the uh, uh, transference uh, in 1972 uh, uh, seems, seems to have been calmed down. Uh, of course, it's uh, still uh, controversial, but um, not much attention has been paid to these islands. Uh, the recent crisis started uh, 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 from December 8, 2008. PRC first had official boats trying to enter the uh, territorial sea area of this island. Okay, this is uh, 2008, the end of 2008. And in September 2012, this is something uh, you might all have known, that uh, uh, 
uh, because of the uh, the, uh, uh, the Tokyo uh, head of a, a, a prefecture uh, trying to purchase uh, the three islands. The three islands is uh, just what we have shown. Uh, this is three. Uh, uh, the Diao Yutai and the Bei Xiao Dao and Nan Xiao Dao. Because uh, those three islands uh, had been uh, used by Koga family, uh, uh, which started to, to use uh, these islands since um, uh, uh, 19, uh, 1896. At the very beginning, they rented it from the Japanese government. Later, they purchased it. And so uh, in uh, 2009, September, the Tokyo head of prefecture uh, tried to purchase those three islands. And the central government of Japan uh, was worried because uh, this is uh, some controversial islands. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's uh, beyond uh, the control of the central government. It might uh, instigate some international uh, war or something like that. That's why the Japanese uh, central government purchased it. Purchased those uh, three islands from Koga family. Then uh, there's a serious protest from the PRC side. They, they destroyed the Japanese cars and they, they, they uh, broke down the Japanese shops. This is something that they still have some, some idea. And uh, right now, the war fighters, fighter planes of both the countries were confronting with each other there, with just a small distance in between. And the official boats of PRC and Japan were facing with each other around the territorial seas of these islands. So this is some issue really uh, uh, recent, imminent. Uh, 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 this, uh, this is some, some uh, danger of war in East Asian seas. And in last April, uh, Obama uh, firstly uh, spoke, as, spoke up as the president of the U.S. that these islands are within the sphere of uh, U.S.-Japan Mutual Security Treaty. But uh, even uh, the U.S. stance is uh, this, uh, like this. Uh, Japan continued to say these uh, islands were theirs. They own their sovereignty. They own the uh, sovereignty over these uh, islands. This is the Japanese position. And the uh, PRC, what's the position of PRC? It's very important for a uh, Taiwan historian. They say, this al these islands are Taiwan's. And uh, Taiwan is the PRC's. <laughs> so if uh, Taiwan historians uh, do not pay attention to this issue, then for the Taiwan loses, is going to lose, it's not the only the Delta Islands, but also Taiwan. That's why I'm here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, um, then uh, I'm only a scholar from Academic Sinica, the Institute of Modern History. I'm, uh, I'm, at no, I'm, I'm not at the position uh, to propose the national claim over these islands. How about the, and the leader of the uh, Republic of China in Taiwan, President Ma Ying-jeou, uh, so, um, uh, stands about this issue. On August 5th, 2012, uh, when commemorating the 60th anniversary of the ROC Japan Peace Treaty, the president of the ROC, Ma Ying-jeou, um, Build his East, A uh, East China Sea Peace uh, Initiative, Donghai Hai Peking Tang Yi, East China Sea Peace Initiative. He called on joint exploration and the development of resources around Diao Yutai by the OOC Japan and the PRC. Okay, so uh, this is uh, very much uh, official position uh, from OOC side right now. Um, Mao's initiative was proposed with the hope to leave the controversies aside and directly go for the co cooperation. That's Mao's uh, position. As a scholar from the Institute of Modern History at the Demonstrator, I 
I didn't know anything about Diao Yitai before October 2012. You know, the interaction between intellectuals and the social realities. I didn't know about it. I know, I knew, I tried to understand it because of that project <coughs> controversy, uh, which was started in September 2012. You know, most of proposal was made before that purchase. Mm. And I started to dig up the, this question uh, in October 2012. How come? I, 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 actually, I have, have been busy with some other projects. How come I moved to this topic? It's because uh, in October 2012, one Harvard professor came to Taipei and uh, kept asking me, kept asking me who owns this island. And then because uh, the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs Archives is now kept in my institute. In my institute. So I just walk over <laughs> and to, to check mm, who owns uh, this uh, island. <laughs> and uh, the answer uh, is today's uh, uh, talk, okay? Uh, the answer is uh, ROC owns this island. <laughs> <laughs> then how come? How come? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a scholar. I, I cannot say anything ridiculous, right? Okay, so, 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 um, because in the process of digging the archives, I have found the U.S. note issued to ROC on May 26, 1971. It's very crucial for solving this international crisis. And as it reveals that three parties have all basis in international laws for the joint exploitation initiated by President Mao. So, you know that the, the, the uh, commonality and difference between me and Mao? Uh, commonality is, well, it's fine to have a joint exploitation. Uh, and the, the, the goal is the same. My goal is the same as Ma. But my rationale is different from Ma. Because uh, Ma says, uh, just leave aside the controversies. If, uh, if uh, Taiwan go for an international negotiation with the controversies, who will uh, pay attention to Taiwan? Right? So uh, my difference from Ma is, uh, well, Taiwan has its own, it has its uh, position based on international law. Japan, PRC, also have a position based upon international laws. Since every party has the basis on international and the UN uh, Charter, the Article 1 of UN Charter says for imminent uh, uh, challenge for uh, international peace, we had better to go to international law. So uh, that's why uh, we have uh, to pay some attention to it. Uh, and um, uh, uh, the data and the approach that I have been used for this uh, discussion uh, includes not only the archives of uh, the Republic of China, I also use archives of Japan and uh, also of the US. I also refer to some international laws for this analysis. So uh, the, then let's move it to the content of the note and its uh, legacy for the U.S. stance. This is uh, the note, the origin of the note. You can see it clearly that it has been issued by the Department of State from Washington, May 26, 1971. Uh, the Secretary of State presented his uh, compliments to His Excellency, the Chinese Ambassador. This is Chinese Ambassador, is Ambassador of the Republic of China, okay? And ha 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 has um, the honor to reply to the note of uh, March 15, 1971, from former Ambassador uh, Zhou Shukai concerning the legal status of the Diao Yutai Isolates also known as the St. Kaku Islands. The United States government is aware that, uh, is aware, sorry, is aware that a dispute exists between the government of the Republic of China and Japan regarding sovereignty over these islands, 
It is the firm policy of the United States to take no position on the merits of this dis dispute. As Ambassador Joe noted, the United States presently administers these islands under Article 3 of the Treaty of Peace with Japan, that's the San Francisco Peace Treaty. The United States is best to return to Japan in 1972 all its remaining rights under Article 3 in accordance with the agreement announced by the uh, President of the United States and the Prime Minister of Japan on November 21st, 1969. The United States believes that a return of administrative rights uh, to the party from which those rights will be received can in no way prejudice the underlying claims of the Republic of China. The United States cannot add to the legal rights Japan possessed before it uh, transferred administration of the islands to the United States, nor can the United States, by giving back of what it received, diminish the rights of the Republic of China. Okay, so this uh, is the, the, the purpose of uh, this uh, uh, topic uh, is uh, to analyze how come uh, U.S. issued that uh, diplomatic note to, to ROC and what's the, what's the process of making of uh, this uh, diplomatic uh, uh, documents. Oh, before that, let me say, um, um, actually, uh, the stance uh, of the U.S. and Japan now are different. Japan says Japan has a sovereignty. U.S. says that Japan just has uh, administrative rights. Okay. Uh, how come this uh, separation of uh, administrative rights from sovereignty, uh, the uh, position of the U.S., uh, how come uh, U.S. have this position? Uh, some Japanese worker uh, would say it's, uh, it's related to uh, some U.S. attempt for textile negotiations with the ROC in Taiwan. Uh, <clears throat> that idea was actually uh, by uh, going through the U.S. The archives, we could find we could find that um, that attempt had actually um, uh, uh, thought of uh, in U.S. Uh, government governmental uh, interaction into governmental interaction. That that proposal uh, means that uh, if uh, U.S. Uh, uh, did not uh, give uh, Jiao Yutai to Japan in the coming uh, 1972 uh, Okinawa uh, 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 Revolution Treaty, uh, that means the U.S. still keeps uh, those islands, then uh, Taiwan might give U.S. a more favorable uh, condition for the textile import. So this is one theory uh, spread around. <coughs> Uh, Taiwan's uh, United Daily quoted uh, Japan's Kyoto Zushin, Kyoto Zushin, the, the uh, central agency, Japan's central agencies, both covered this kind of idea and spread it to the the general public. But the, uh, the fact is that I, that the U.S. idea uh, was proposed on June seventh. And uh, you see, after June 7th, um, U.S. still had the um, uh, Okinawa Reversion Treaty uh, signed on June, June 17th. And because the treaty uh, needed the, the process of signature and then ratified domestically and then exchange and turn effective. So that uh, June 17th, uh, 7th idea about the textiles was not carried out, was not uh, executed. And uh, so uh, and the, the United Daily's uh, 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 quotation of uh, uh, Kyoto Zushin uh, says uh, uh, that the textile sense was related with the differentiation between administrative rights and sovereignty. Actually, it's not the, the textile sense, because the textile idea was proposed on June 7th is after the May 26 uh, diplomatic documents, the, the uh, uh, note of about. And so, 
actually is uh, the May 26 uh, note which uh, have uh, led to uh, the U.S. stance to differentiate uh, deritize uh, the administrative rights uh, from sovereignty claims. Um, in, in the treaty, in the Okinawa Reversion Treaty, signed by uh, the Secretary of State William Rogers and uh, Japanese uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Keiji Aichi, um, and there's no uh, wordings on the treaty itself about Diaoyita. Okay, uh, Diaoyita exists only on this map. It, it was uh, forwarded to Japan according to this map, uh, which uh, had been attached to the Okinawa Reversion Treaty. Diaoyita is here. You see, we deal with Wang Weiyu, Chi Weiyu. Diaoyita is here. So. This is the area for the Okinawa Reversion Treaty, okay? Um, now then, after, after the reversion and uh, the U.S. continue, because, um, as I say, a treaty needs to go back to the home country to be ratified. According to U.S. Uh, uh, Constitution, uh, every treaty has to go through the Senate's uh, approval. So while uh, reporting in, in the Senate, uh, the, uh, William Rogers, the Secretary of the State, already underscored the differentiation uh, between uh, sovereignty and administrative rights. The wordings are almost the same as uh, that in the May 26, uh, uh, 1971 note, okay? And uh, that position, uh, continue up to now for U.S. stance. So you can see the importance of that uh, May 26 note. And, uh, and for, for that administrative rights, which is also very crucial because uh, for the U.S.-Japan Mutual Cooperation and Security Treaty, it says uh, this treaty will be applied to the areas that include Japan's administrative uh, regions but not necessarily areas under its sovereignty. So that May 26 note satisfied uh, the U.S.-Japan uh, 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 treaty's uh, coverage. So that's why Obama in last April continued to say, well, PRC, uh, please uh, understand that uh, this is uh, uh, within the area of uh, U.S.-Japan. Security Treaty, okay? So, so you can see uh, the importance of uh, May 26, 1971 note, which actually is uh, the very uh, origin of a U.S. stance told the Delta athletes uh, today. Um, then, uh, not, uh, and the background for shaping this note, uh, we have to go back to those years, uh, uh, 1969 to 1971. 1969 was the year that uh, Richard Nixon uh, started the pro-PRC policy. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, when that policy was uh, tr tried to be taken, uh, to be adopted within the U.S., there were a lot of uh, oppositions. Uh, including uh, um, people more for Russia, or more for India, or more for KMT in Taiwan. Um, so those uh, policies were made very secretly, but um, particularly under the National Security Council, headed by Kissinger. Okay, so this uh, May 26, 1971 note was actually uh, 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 decided by Kissinger, uh, and and then at this time, uh, uh, U.S. Uh, attitude toward Taiwan includes uh, these others, because um, uh, uh, um, of the improvement of uh, U.S. Uh, PRC relationship, and also. Uh, the, the end of the coming end of the Vietnam War, 
U.S. intended to gradually remove its troops stationed in Taiwan. Uh, we have U.S. Uh, troops uh, uh, in early period, uh, uh, um, but um, uh, uh, in 1969 to uh, 71, um, U.S. had an intention to to withdraw those uh, uh, troop, uh, U.S. troops in Taiwan. Also, uh, US, U.S. made a great mistake uh, to have made the ROC to have left the UN on October 21st, 1971, because uh, this this is not a term made by me. It's a term uh, made uh, in the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Secretary of State archives about the uh, Kissinger's mistake uh, for for uh, resulting in this kind of outcome. And uh, so, uh, but uh, at the same time, so so many giving up uh, for Taiwan. But at the same time. U.S. guaranteed Japan that Taiwan's security will be maintained. So, U.S., Japan, and uh, ROC in Taiwan had uh, mutual um, security uh, uh, alliance relationship. And this is uh, the very background for the May 26, 1971. Uh, from the U.S. side, of course, it's, uh, it's also affected by ROC factors. Um, the ROC's uh, uh, rationale for its claim uh, of sovereignty over uh, the Delta Islands has been persuasive. This is also uh, a crucial reason. Another reason is uh, our uh, uh, protect the Oitai movement, which had been very anti-Japanese and uh, anti-U.S. Uh, uh, that movement uh, 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 started uh, in early 1971, just uh, on the eve of the May 26th uh, note, okay? It started uh, in uh, January and uh, 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 be demanded uh, uh, just on the eve of this May 26th uh, note, uh, which were also uh, uh, essential for the creation of this note. So we, we go, go to the background on the ROC side. Uh, actually, uh, for when the, the, um, the Uh, maybe uh, we could skip this. Uh, we could go more for that uh, for in the process of discussion. Um, when the UN, United Nations Economic Commission for Asia and the uh, uh, Far East, uh, e e e -E -E ECFA, the, the abbreviation is ECFA. Um, uh, 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 no, it was not, not ECWA, sorry, sorry. ECWA is uh, our this recent uh, uh, cooperation, uh, uh, ECAFE, ECAFE, ECAFE. And this is an uh, abbreviation of uh, this uh, uh, commission. Uh, and uh, this uh, ECAFE in 1968 uh, discovered the rich resources of petroleum oil and gas. Uh, after this, um, and this means, uh, you see, this is the map for the continental shelf uh, near uh, of this area, and uh, uh, this is the Delta area. Uh, the Ecafe's uh, report reveals that this area was uh, had been very rich in oil. Okay. After uh, this, uh, this is the report of Ecafe. Uh, we then, because for this report, there's a joint authors. Some of uh, Taiwan's uh, scholars had been among the authors. So actually, ROC uh, joined that uh, ECAFE's uh, project uh, for this uh, uh, maritime exploration. And, and then after the report had been reviewed, uh, was uh, the response of uh, ROC. At the very beginning, Jiang Kai-shi is very clear. Well, we don't have any power to grab it by weapon. 
we have to say we are a member of the UN. We have to stick to the UN charters, that is, uh, to peacefully solve things by referring to international laws. But uh, for international laws, at the very beginning, because uh, it's something related with the continental shelf, at that time, UN has a law on continental shelf. Even uh, Republic of China uh, w was um, uh, um, the Republic of China's uh, representative attended uh, the, the draft, uh, uh, drafting of the uh, UN Continental Shelf Convention in Geneva, but uh, uh, in in 1957, uh, ROC didn't uh, ratify it. As I told you, uh, treaties uh, need two process. Uh, uh, when the second process is the ratification. Uh, always they attended the drafting, the signature of uh, that uh, uh, UN Continental Shelf uh, Convention. So uh, at this point, what uh, always they thought about and uh, and executed as a ratification of that UN Continental Shelf uh, Convention. Okay, this is the first response of uh, OOC, and it's not until. Um, September 1970, you see, the report was reviewed in 69, and the ratification of, uh, of uh, that uh, convention was made in uh, 69. It's not until uh, the September of 70 that the OOC firstly uh, uh, spoke up that uh, they, they uh, about their disagreement about the Japan's sovereignty over these islands. Just a disagreement, uh, not a, a strong claim over, okay? This is the, uh, the second stage, just a disagreement. And then in October 1970, Aosie, uh began to declare that uh, they will try their best to preserve the legitimate rights on these islands. And just, just uh, there's, there's still no clear rationales up to now. Um, up to um, uh, February 1971, ROC firstly officially declared the sovereignty of uh, those islands um, verbally. Uh, February is a Burberry. It's not until the March 15th that we read in, in the May 26th uh, note. It's not until March 15th that the ROC delivered the note to the U.S. And as uh, Kissinger commented, uh, uh, Kissinger's uh, assistant commented, it's not until then that the ROC made persuasive uh, uh, arguments for, for uh, our uh, sovereignty uh, claim over these islands, okay? So you see, there's, a, uh, there's a, some a transition of uh, our uh, understanding of uh, their, their uh, 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 legal claim over these islands. How our see come up with this uh, finding? Uh, okay? The, because uh, the government had a, a great pressure uh, 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 from in, uh, internationally and domestically. Internationally, you know, this is uh, 1971. That's the year that uh, uh, ROC was a kick of the uh, UN. So, so before October 25th, ROC had a great, uh, had to be very cautious about uh, its relation with the U.S. and Japan. It's the uh, U.S. and Japan to be relied upon by ROC to keep ROC seat in UN. This is international. So ROC had to be careful for proposing its sense about these uh, islands. But uh, domestically, oh, uh, in the U.S., uh, a lot of the students and professionals uh, protests uh, uh, started, uh, and, uh, and um, 
protecting Jiao Yitai movement started, and the, the domestically, the Tai Da student, Zheng Da student, and the Sida student follow up. So uh, it constituted a very great pressure for the government uh, in this year. So uh, between 70 to uh, 70, um, um, late 70 to early 71, ROC government uh, exerted a lot of effort to collect uh, related materials uh, for positive relation about uh, between ROC and uh, the Diawita Arsenalists. And the um, uh, materials uh, uh, found include the Ming and the Qin special envoys uh, to confer titles uh, to kings of Liu Qiu, uh, so their records, their uh, records uh, about, uh, about their envoys, uh, um, the envoys' records about their trip uh, to Liu Qiu. And uh, their trip goes this way from Beijing to Fuzhou and uh, uh, through several routes uh, to Liu Qiu uh, Kingdom. And uh, Diao Yu Tai Si, Huang Wei Yu, you see Si Wei Yu, Gu Mei San, Gu Mei, Gu Mei Island. According to these records, Gu Mei Island has always been described as the border of Liu Qiu Kingdom. So, Diao Yu was beyond, beyond the Liu Qiu, beyond the Liu Qiu kingdom. And uh, this Diao Yu islands were described as the border of uh, Taiwan side. You see, in between, okay, then we go to the ge geographical regions. Um, from this map, you already see there's uh, some deep sea uh, in between Naha and uh, this is three islands. Uh, this uh, uh, deep sea is uh, called the Okinawa Chua, uh, which could, could be 2,000 meters in depth. So it's a natural border between Okinawa and uh, the Delta Islands. This is Okinawa Chua. So uh, this is uh, Okinawa Chua, second uh, reason uh, the ROC site um, found. And then the third reason is um, um, for fishing in the Diao Yitai area. It tend to be the Taiwanese fishermen. The Okinawa fishermen seldom came to these islands. Even these islands belong to Japan after 1895. Uh, mostly it's the Taiwanese fishermen went there. And while these islands was um, under the U.S. administrative control uh, between 1952 to 19, uh, it's up to 1972, but up to the controversy started in 1968, uh, it's a Taiwanese fisherman who went there for fish, fishing. Okay, these are documents. This is uh, for for the in a in a period when. Delta um, was under the administrative rule of the U.S. So, even with this materials, as I told you, the uh, Aussie government had to be very cautious. Their response is only 50% sure uh, about the Aussie's sovereignty over the Delta Island. Okay, still not quite sure because these are not international law. And this, uh, uh, the Department of uh, North American Affairs, because it is this uh, 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 bureau, uh, government, governmental officer to deal with the U.S., they are still quite not sure. The breakthrough was made on May 20th, 1970. Um, um, Representative of the Taiwan Chamber of Commerce in Okinawa, named as Xu Jinman, reviewed the, the following information. It says, because uh, of his uh, uh, on-spot investigation, he went to Okin uh, He was in uh, Okinawa, uh, based on his on-spot investigation, 
it reveals that Ryukyu turned into Japan's Okinawa Prefecture in 1879. It used to be a Ryukyu Kingdom, right? And it turned into Japan's Okinawa Prefecture in 1879. The Koga family from Kyushu, Japan, went to Okinawa in 1879 and directly after the transition. And then to Diaoyitai in 1880 for business expansion. Uh, what kind of business could be uh, done there? Uh, and to gather the, um, the turtle back uh, for uh, Chinese medicine or uh, for the um, uh, birds feathers or a lot of uh, other um, uh, shears to collect the shears for some uh, handicrafts purpose. So, um, and after this, the Koga family had petition, pet, uh, had uh, um, uh, asked the uh, Okinawa Prefecture to include the, this islands under Okinawa Prefecture. But, and the, the official request was made in 1885. But those official requests were torn down again and again by the central government of Japan because of the concern about the, the Qin government's opposition. Okay, this is very crucial. And when Xu Qinman uh, reviewed this information, uh, he also said that it's not until the Koga, according to the Koga family, it's not until the uh, victory of uh, Japan over Qin, uh, China that uh, the Koga family started to use uh, these uh, islands. Okay? Uh, so, so this information for the uh, uh, policy government, which was very crucial, and uh, Xu Jinman suggested that uh, Koga family said that uh, they have lost a lot, uh, a lot of related materials. Uh, uh, it's uh, suggested to go to Japanese uh, official documents for related information. Okay, then uh, the ROC government did go to the Japanese uh, official documents and render them into Chinese in, at that time. These are uh, uh, Japanese originals and this uh, 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 Chinese uh, uh, translation at that time. Okay, so at that time, the, the uh, uh, protecting Jiaoyitai students, the student movement might not know the fact, okay? Uh, you have a student movement issue uh, yesterday, right? Uh, the stu uh, student movement uh, for protecting um, uh, Tai uh, at that time uh, always think the uh, government did not, did not do anything. But actually, the government was doing this, uh, this uh, several things. They have uh, rendered the Japanese uh, archives into Chinese, and uh, saying that uh, um, uh, from 1885 uh, to 1894, uh, uh, the central government of Japan uh, turned down the Okinawa Prefecture's uh, uh, petition for including, uh, for including the Oita into Okinawa again and again, because uh, they say uh, these islands had been named by, by uh, Chinese people, and uh, in Shanghai there's a newspaper covering uh, our Koga family's uh, visit at uh, these uh, islands. Uh, if uh, Japan uh, took action uh, at that time, it might uh, uh, stimulate some international uh, uh, confrontation. So, so, um, you see, that a Japanese document. Up to now, what Japan said uh, about the, the sovereignty over this islands is based upon the cabinet their cabinet decision made uh, on January 14th, 1895. And they say, uh, we decided to include, I just summarize, before 94, no inclusion. It's uh, January 14th of uh, 1895. The cabinet, Japanese cabinet, decided to include it secretly. Uh, even their own people uh, didn't know it. 
know about it. And, they, and up to now, they say, well, we started from that time point. Uh, that's before Shimonoseki Treaty. Uh, Shimonoseki Treaty turned into uh, turn effective May 8th, January 14th and May 8th. There's some um, time gap, okay? The Japanese side uh, uh, insisted to say no involvement with uh, the Shimonoseki Treaty, which ended the war between Japan and China. Okay, and uh, so, so um, they say um, international uh, communities uh, did not render their pro um, any, any objection to them. They, they did it secretly, okay? How could the international uh, communities uh, oppose to that? But then they, 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 uh, they uh, claim upon this um, because uh, no international opposition and uh, those islands were, were islands without the human in, uh, habitation. So um, they started to own these islands uh, since uh, 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 January 14, 1895. But here, uh, if that's something purely made domestically, you can see from this archives, Japanese archives. This is uh, uh, Nai Musho, uh, Ministry of International Affairs. For discussion, the inclusion of uh, Diawita into, into Okinawa, it has to go to Gai Musho. Wai Wusheng. Did you see Wai Wusheng? Okay. Of course, it's not different even at that time. At, at that time period, for Japan itself, it's not de purely defined as uh, some domestic issue. It's something related uh, with international affairs. For the nation to be involved, of course, it's uh, Qin China. Okay, so um, uh, then. Then so with uh, this uh, materials, uh, then uh, the AOC government started more, to be more vigorous, and then they invited a lot of um, uh, international law scholars. These are the, the name days for those international law scholars, and with uh, among these scholars, this professor, Du Hengzhi. Uh, he had been an international law professor at uh, Donghai University before his uh, retirement. And after retirement, he had been an uh, international law professor at Dongwu, Suzhou University in Taipei. Okay? Uh, in the uh, archives, we see his uh, writing about uh, to retrieve the Delta isolates according to international laws. So if we compare the March 15th note with uh, this proposal, actually the March 15th note's uh, rationale had been based upon Du Hengzhi's uh, uh, proposal. Um, a very uh, crucial um, uh, sense proposed at this time is uh, to sever the link between Diao Yitai and Okinawa. That means, um, because uh, in the March 15th note, ROC proposed the U.S. just uh, re return Okinawa proper uh, to Japan without Diao Yitai. And so, uh, so sever the link uh, between Okinawa and Diao Yitai. Okay. And because uh, what's the Japanese uh, uh, claim over Okinawa? Following uh, Fra San Francisco Peace Treaty, Article 2, Japan had to give up uh, uh, Taiwan and uh, Korea and a lot of others, but not including Okinawa. He took Okinawa in 18, uh, Japan took uh, Okinawa in 1879, right? And uh, took uh, Taiwan. Uh, in 1895, based upon Shimonoseki Treaty between uh, Qin China and Japan, um, for Okinawa, it, uh, Japan need not 
uh, give it a renounce because the the verb used in the uh, in the San Francisco Peace Treaty is a renounce. In Article Two, no no renunciation of uh, Okinawa uh, for Japan. That's why uh, the U.S. kept saying that uh, Japan keeps the residual sovereignty over Okinawa right after the um, uh, turning into effect of the uh, Okinawa Peace Treaty uh, on uh, April 28th, uh, 1952. Uh, directly after that, the U.S. said Japan kept residual sovereignty. That's the background for the 1972 Treaty of Okinawa Reversion. Okay? So that's the Okinawa situation. But for uh, for uh, Delta Islands, according to Du Hong's, for any territory change uh, transferred because of the war, it has to await for the peace treaty to finalize the war, to end the war, to have a legal. Uh, a settlement of those uh, territory uh, transferred. This is this is the most important uh, legal concept for Diao Yitai up to now, as I I I, I think. So uh, Du Hongzhi uh, proposes this uh, uh, international law principle. You see, uh, the Koga family asked us to include. Uh, Diao Yitai into Okinawa all the way from uh, 1880, and the Okinawa government uh, proposed it uh, since 1885. It's not until 1891, uh, uh, January 14th, that Japan made that uh, uh, decision for that inclusion. What, uh, according to the document that I cited, uh, the, the Japanese government directly say, well, situation today is different from the 1885 situation. What's the difference? Because the Sino-Japanese War outbroke in, Jan uh, in July 1894, okay? And after December, China already accepted the peace negotiation. The end of 1894, uh, China already accepted a peace negotiation. Japan already had a victory in the war. That's why Japan says the situation has been changed, so they turn uh, to deem uh, and they, they turn to decide to include Diao Yita into, into uh, uh, Okinawa. So this decision, according to the international law that I just summarized to you, has to be finalized in the Treaty of Shimonoseki, because that's the peace treaty which finalized the war between Qin China and Japan uh, uh, between 1894 to 1895, the Jiaozhanzi. Okay, so then uh, Japan said, oh, you know, well, what say? Well, you look up the Treaty of uh, Shimonoseki. No wording about the Diao Yitai Islands at all. Then where are they? According to Du Hongzhi, uh, the, the original wording is uh, like it goes like this: China says to Japan in perpetuity and full sovereignty the foreign territories together with the fortifications, arsenals, and public property. They are armed. And the following territories include the island of Formosa, together with all islands appertaining or belonging to the said island of Formosa. For Du Hongzhi, Diao Yita is here. All islands appertaining or belonging to the said island of Formosa. And he has a, he has a, uh, his a, uh, international law insight here by reading into how come to have a pertaining in front of belonging to. 
there's a difference uh, in international law about these uh, two words. Belonging to it just uh, uh, emphasize uh, those uh, people uh, who was uh, uh, there was uh, people living uh, on those uh, places and they pay taxes and the government rendered protection over them. That's belong to. Jiao uh, was not within this category. Um, but obtaining to underscores the geographical connection. As I shown you before, Jiao was geographically, uh, geologically uh, connected with uh, Taiwan Island. So that obtaining to was um, intentionally added uh, by the Japanese government. The original trap was a soshu. Okay? Later it changed to soyo fusu. How come the Meiji government was so so um, uh, uh, atten uh, so attentive to, to this words? Soshu, soyo fusu. That the fu is uh, appertaining to because the Koga family was uh, always nagging at the Japanese government to include those islands. And uh, it's not until, you see, the Koga family, when, when did they go to, to, to the, these islands? The Shimonoseki turned effective May 8th, and the Koga family went there directly on June 1st. You can see this. Uh, a historical context. So uh, today, uh, many Japanese say uh, Jiao Yitai isolates uh, were not included in the Shimano Treaty. Actually, do not uh, clearly understand the Meiji government's uh, meticulous attention to their national interest in 1895. Uh, they, they pay a great, they exerted a great effort. Uh, to include the Diao Yu Tai with the Taiwan, uh, uh, to, to go with Taiwan uh, to, be, to have been ceded to Japan. Understand? Okay? So, uh, since Taiwan was uh, ceded in the Shimono Seki Treaty to Japan, then uh, was the post uh, Second World War situation for Taiwan. This is uh, the international. Law, international treaty, in continuous with uh, the Shimono Seki Treaty for Taiwan's sovereignty. Uh, as I just uh, read for you, the Shimono Seki Treaty had a full sovereignty of Taiwan ceded to Japan in perpetuity. So many people complain that uh, this treaty didn't don't have the word Huan return. You have to go back to that seated in perpetuity. So legally, Japan could not use the word restore. They could only use renounce, give up. You see? So it's very uh, correct in terms of uh, uh, treaty wordings in the San Francisco Peace Treaty or this uh, Taipei Treaty for using renounce, because uh, in Shimono Seki, Japan acquired the right over Taiwan in perpetuity. So, and uh, this is a treaty sent by the Japanese emperor. This is uh, Yin Xin, so no matter in terms of um, uh, trust in, in Oriental concept, or in terms of uh, international law in Western concept, uh, Japan has to obey this to this treaty. Okay, so that's why uh, the the, the uh, March fifteenth notes was uh, uh, was made with all these uh, uh, legal uh, arguments. That's why the assistant to Kissinger said. Uh, last time in October, they didn't say uh, clearly about uh, their right over uh, these islands, but this time they, they already uh, could utter 
uh, clear uh, um, uh, uh, reasons. So this is the background for 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 the for for the um, uh, May twenty nine uh, twenty uh, six uh, uh, note uh, of U.S. What's the implications for the uh, present day situation? Um, several, uh, just uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, PRC, uh, Minister of Defense, of the Ministry of Defense, uh, uh, talked with uh, the U.S. Minister, Minister of um, Defense, saying that PRC uh, had got no chance to sign the peace treaty with Japan after the end of the Second World War. And the PRC, uh, PRC uh, sacrificed so many people. Uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, the war declaration for uh, PRC to follow rather than the peace treaty for PRC to follow. Okay. Of course, the U.S. side didn't say anything. But if you were the minister of U.S. Minister of Defense, what would you say? What I suggest is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. And then, uh, first of all, you see, what about if, if Japan did not accept that uh, Delta Islands went to Japan according to the Shimonoseki Treaty. That means they don't accept the international law principle that I just summarized. Everything to move because of the war have to be decided by the peace treaty which finalized the war. What's, what what does this uh, 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 this international law um, imply? It's like uh, if uh, uh, A is gambling with B, and they uh, uh, say at the very beginning that if I lose, then my house on uh, my one house uh, will be given to you, and uh, the gamble was on and on. Uh, sometimes A wins, sometimes B wins. Yeah, but uh, uh, finally, A thinks, well, I cannot lose more. I just lose this house. Okay, this is a surrender, right? Surrender could not make a legal transaction of that house. For the legal transaction of that house, they have to go to the, the court, right? Or the, uh, the official government to make uh, that, uh, that legal transaction. This is the, the idea for that international law principle. So, uh, if uh, Japan uh, did, uh, don't accept, accept uh, that Diao uh, Yutai uh, was with Taiwan to go to Japan uh, 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 based on the Shimonoseki Peace Treaty, then Japan needed to observe what the PRC Minister of Defense said several days ago. Japan had to observe the Cairo Declaration and the Potsdam Declaration. The Potsdam Declaration Act was based upon Cairo Declaration. It says Japan had to stay at the four islands. And the, the minor islands that we allies agreed agree with each other, you know? And so that means Japan could not have Okinawa. <laughs> you see PRC's attempt now? PRC has been so much trying to expand out, outward. If the other side could not defend itself, he has uh, enough reason to spend now. Okay? This is uh, really uh, crucial. As I say, Japan actually could return Okinawa because of the San Francisco Peace Treaty and the uh, 1972's uh, Okinawa Reversion Treaty. But you, if you don't uh, follow this, uh, 
international law principle to say, well, uh, it's not in Shimono Seki. The difference between Shimono Seki and uh, the Japan's permanent decision is that international law. It has to await for the peace treaty to finalize uh, the territory transaction, okay? Do you understand this point? 1895, January 14th, the cabinet decision. Japan up to now, they have, uh, they have uh, the basic, um, uh, basic viewpoints about, uh, about Senkaku issued uh, in 1972. It's uh, right on the website of uh, Japan's uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, rendered it into Chinese. Uh, always uh, stick with uh, that cabinet decision. But I would say, according to international law, Japan had to uh, uh, accept those islands went to Japan because of the uh, Shimono Seki Treaty. If, if it, uh, Japan doesn't follow this, then Japan had to follow the war declaration, because uh, that cabinet decision was made while the war was uh, still on, right? And because uh, um, the, the peace treaty had not been uh, turned effective, so it's uh, still in the process of war. And um, uh, Kylo or Postan was both war declarations. According to those war declarations, uh, Japan could not have uh, Okinawa. Understand this point? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, crucial. Uh, because it, it went through two wars. First is the uh, first uh, Sino-Japanese war. Second is the uh, Second World War. And the uh, international law principle was the same. If uh, Japan doesn't uh, obey the international law principle for the first war, then he has to observe that, uh, because he, he stick with uh, the, the Cameron decision made in the war. Uh, then the Allies made a decision uh, in the Cairo and the Boston, uh, saying that Japan had to, uh, had to be back to the four islands. Japan could not have a Okinawa. So then, uh, without Okinawa, Japan could not have a uh, either. Because of uh, Okinawa, so Japan had some plan over, over uh, Diao Yutai. Okay? You get the point? This is very crucial. Um, okay, so um, uh, that's for Japan as well as uh, for... Then, then how about the PRC? They say, well, we didn't have chance uh, to sign the peace treaty. We, we, we have no obligation. We have no... Well, uh, uh, the war had been ended in Second World War, ended in 1945. PRC, there's no PRC in 1945. Um, you know, uh, China had uh, war against Japan for so many years, right? Uh, after, uh, after the failure, uh, up to what time? For this, uh, up to three. Okay, we could finish it by three. Not bad. Mm. Okay, so um, uh, Jiang Kai-shek had actually uh, tried to take a neutral position, Zhongli, neutral position, after so many years of uh, defeat by Japan. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, uh, in Second World War, in the first stage is the, the uh, uh, German and uh, Japan side to have a uh, won the war, right? On the, in the first stage, it's not until the second stage the, that the Allies turn to be uh, on the winning side. Uh, the um, transition uh, event, historical event, is Cairo. Before Cairo, actually, Chiang Kai Shek was quite. Uh, 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 was thinking of uh, to take a neutral position it, uh, without Madame Jiang Kai-shek. 
you, you remember for the Cairo Declaration, we always have the photo with uh, Madame there, right? Uh, Madame had been very influential for Chiang Kai-shek's decision to join uh, the Allied camp. Without Chiang Kai-shek's decision, China would, ha would not be in any position uh, to be on the winning side to sign the peace treaty. So we have to give credit to ROC government rather than PRC government. Okay. So of course, uh, the war caused uh, the Chinese people a lot of uh, casualties. Uh, the war is uh, a nation to nation uh, uh, competition rather than a governmental to gov uh, government to government uh, uh, confrontation. Uh, uh, Chinese people's uh, sacrifice uh, needs to be taken care of. Up to now, the China side, the PRC side, always uh, complained that, um, well, how uh, their sacrifice had not been taken care of yet. And this is uh, very much a uh, root for the East Asian uh, uh, conflict, right? But for me, how come on October 25th, PRC could sit at a security prominent member of the Security Council of the UN? Because the PRC was not involved with the war at all. The war end, ended in 1945. PRC showed up in 1949. You know, um, my other subject is uh, about the images on the currencies. Up to October 1, uh, uh, the communist money still carried Zhonghua Mingguo on, on their notes. Okay? PRC showed up uh, only after October 1st, uh, 1949. So for, for people who, who sit on the permanent state of Security Council was the winning countries in the Second War, World War, right? So having the PRC sitting there is a great compensation for people, Chinese people's sacrifice in the war. <coughs> you know, in related with the Diao Yutai issue, how people, how, how important, how, man, how, how huge is the benefit for PRC sitting in the Security Council, permanent seat of the Security Council of the UN. We, we have to go to another, another international law. UN Convention of the Law of the Seas. I mentioned the UN Convention of the Continental Shelf. After PRC sat on the permanent seat of the uh, Security Council of the UN, PRC started to mobilize all the third world countries to change the UN uh, Convention on the Continental Shelf into the UN uh, Convention of the Law of the Seas. Um, in the continental shelf uh, law, there's no clear boundary for the development of uh, maritime resources. They just say uh, each country uh, could develop uh, maritime resources near to that country. It's uh, very uh, um, ambiguous. PRC set it to have uh, 200 nautical miles beyond the coastline of uh, each country. You see, PRC had uh, that long coastal lines. This is uh, very much the root of the current uh, East Asian controversies and the South, uh, East, East Seas controversies and the South Seas controversies, okay? Because of POC also, all this, uh, they, they, they could uh, develop all these uh, maritime areas. Okay, 
So this is just one example for their sitting there, uh, how beneficial it has been. And then in addition to this, this 200 nautical miles is beyond the boundary of the territorial seas. In the original convention, it's a three nautical miles beyond the coastal line. The PRC had extended it to 12 nautical miles. Okay, but then uh, uh, PRC, well, if, if uh, he, uh, it still would like to sit in this uh, beneficial uh, position, it has to observe the UN Charter Article 1. Every controversy had to be solved according to international law. So, well, then we could set a PRC the right because the distance between the Oita Island and the PRC's nearest coast is within 200 nautical miles. So PRC could reach the set. Okay, then uh, Japan, of course, from from that small island uh, to the Oita Islands is also within the 200 nautical miles. And Japan had uh, uh, effective uh, control over this island, so that's uh, administrative rights. Okay, and uh, ROC had a sovereignty right. So this is uh, uh, this are the international law basis uh, that I have so far for these three parties. Um, one question you might have in mind is, what's the difference between administrative rights and the sovereignty rights? Uh, if you go back to the wardens, they have a legislative power, they have administrative power, they have a juridical power. Then why come? How come this is not sovereignty? Please go back to Macau's situation. Uh, Portu Portugal, P Portuguese, the Portuguese entered Macau in 1553 without any treaty, because uh, that uh, before 16, what? Westphalia started from 1648. 1553 is much earlier than 1648. And the, the international treaties started from the Westphalia system, okay? And it's not until 1887 that the Portuguese government had a treaty with the Qing government saying that Portuguese, gov uh, Portuguese people could have an administrative rights over Macau. So in 74, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Portugal said Macau was a Chinese territory under their administration. The difference between administrative rights and sovereignty is ownership and use right. Okay? So, the ROC still have the ownership of these islands. Um, then uh, the Japanese side would say, well, uh, Japan ROC diplomatic ties was severed in 1972, and their Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, uttered in that year about the termination of the ROC Japan Peace Treaty. What to deal with this? Um, when you people go to Japan, maybe, uh, no, 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 not all of you. Some of you who, come, who have come from Taiwan and are still uh, carrying ROC passport. I would like to ask you, when you go to Japan, do, are, are you carrying the PRC passport? or ROC passport. In international treaties, because the treaties often have many, many articles, some articles carry the nature that 
it's, a, it's a dealing with something going on. Okay, it's called executory articles. For some uh, articles, it deal with something to be finalized. It's a, it's a, uh, labeled as executed articles. For the transfer of a Taiwan's sovereignty, which had been ceded to Japan uh, based on Shimonoseki Treaty, for the sovereignty change, it has been executed. For the diplomatic ties, it has been terminated. You can see the 1972 significance for the Taipei Treaty. Uh, for something going on, for example, um, uh, trade co uh, cooperation or navigation co cooperation, fishing cooperation, all of them stopped in 1972. But for the transfer of Taiwan sovereignty or the end of war, I also was not uh, resuming the war. After the termination of, uh, of the, this treaty in 1972 as claimed by Japan's side, right? And the end of the war, that's what the peace treaty means, the end of war or the tra uh, transfer of Taiwan sovereignty says uh, uh, um, uh, its efficacy is uh, still uh, uh, um, uh, retained by, by ROC. Okay? So, uh, and you could take, um, last, last we take uh, Macau as an example. This time, let's take uh, Hong Kong as an example. Uh, in 1943, uh, there's uh, a treaty between between England, U.S. and China, always China, for the um, uh, about about abolition of all the treaties. Uh, in it, the uh, extra territory rights was given up by U.S. and England. Okay, uh, within the uh, extra. extra Extraterritorial extra rights before 1943 is uh, the British Councils to to uh, judge the uh, criminals uh, in China, but after 1943, it's the Chinese judge uh, uh, to make that uh, judgment. Uh, so directly changed because that's for executory articles. But for the 99 years lease of the new territories in Hong Kong, it had to stay there. That's why Hong Kong was not returned to China in 1943. It was returned to China in 1997. So you can see, within uh, the same treaty, uh, some articles carry the nature of executory articles and some executive. Um, did, uh, articles. So uh, the uh, sovereignty rights is still, uh, sovereignty rights of Taiwan was still in the hands of ROC in Taiwan. Because of that treaty was signed in 1952, uh, ROC had already been in Taiwan. So, uh, so uh, the sovereignty over Taiwan had been retained by ROC in Taiwan. Okay? So, uh, since uh, Taiwan is ROCs, and the uh, Jiaoyitai Islands was uh, uh, islands pertaining or belonging to Taiwan. So Jiaoyitai is uh, ROC in Taiwan. So 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 then uh, we we we, uh, we 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 get our um, uh, rationales uh, for present mass initiative. <laughs> That's the end. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes of this without stopping. Fantastic. I mean, I don't think. Uh, oh yes, light. Um, um, I know it's already late for the coffee break. Actually, uh, we do have a dedicated uh, time for Q and A. So, would you like to just have a quick break? So let uh, Professor Ling have a break first. Then we can have a, a more dedicated uh, time later, and we can all come back. Um, uh, Amy at two different topics.